Hey everyone, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. You know, tonight is a very special day because tonight is the one year anniversary of this show. It was just about one year ago today that I put up the first episode followed by the original Halloween special. And since that time, we've done 199 episodes, this one being the 200th, I believe. And I can hardly believe it. At this point, I can't even remember what some of the episodes were about. Now, don't forget, if you like the podcast, there's lots of ways to support it. The biggest way is just giving us a rating and reviewing, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. That makes a big difference in other people finding it. Uh, The other thing you can do is to just share it with friends. Uh, The more people who listen, the better. And the third way, if you're feeling like it, I do have a Patreon uh, account. And if you're willing to support with even just $1 per month, that would go a really long way to keeping the lights on around here. The podcast has now reached a point where it does pay for itself in terms of the subscription fees and stuff to keep it posted. But the next thing on the docket is getting a new computer to keep things running because my old MacBook is uh, falling apart here. The next story we're going to do was inspired, of course, by Halloween. Now, Halloween is pretty big here in North America. I'm not sure if it's as big in Australia or the UK, but maybe somebody from one of those countries can write to me and let me know at dad.bedtimestories at gmail.com. The first one we're going to do is a continuation of the magic costume tree, and it's going to be called the superhero costume. So just close your eyes, get as comfy as you can in your bed, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. Imagine yourself waking up in the morning, stretching your arms and legs and getting up out of bed. You remember that it's costume day at school. You have to find a costume quickly. You begin running around the house, looking through all of your drawers and through your closet, running from place to place, and trying to find where you put your Halloween costume, but it's nowhere to be found. Someone calls to you from the kitchen. Honey, it's time to go to school, the voice says. Oh no, I have to get going. You go to the kitchen, you eat a pretty amazing breakfast that's been made for you, and then you head out the door without a costume. You begin to walk down the street, and that's when you remember the costume tree. That tree that you went to where every costume you put on came to life. Maybe you could find it again, and... Maybe you could find a costume in it to wear today and for Halloween. You begin to look along the side of the road. It looks pretty normal for a while, but then you come to a strange path that seems to lead into a forest lined with jack-o'-lanterns, little pumpkins that have been carved with candles inside them. You follow the path of jack-o'-lanterns through the forest, and you find that there's a sense of relaxation and calm in the air. You walk the winding path for a while until you come to an opening, and in the center of the opening is a huge, very old-looking tree. The tree has a door at its base that goes right into the trunk. You run up to the door, Grab the handle with your right hand, turn it, and open up the tree. Just like before, the inside of the tree is like a huge closet, filled with costumes hanging on every side. Costumes of all different colors and all different sizes. The room is lit by something that looks like fireflies that are floating around in the air just creating little points of glowing light everywhere they go. You look around the room, wondering where you should start. You see a bright, glowing blue light at the other end. It begins pulsing on and off. You decide to go check it out. As you get closer, you see that the light's coming from a little fire bug that's sitting on top of the hanger to one of the costumes. The fire bug flies away, 
and you decide to check out the costume that it was sitting on. You take it off the rack and you see that it's some sort of superhero costume. It has a cape, it's made entirely out of red fabric that feels really neat to the touch. You decide to try it on. You step your feet inside the legs, pull the costume up over your shoulder, and then button it at the back just behind your head. You hear a strange noise, like a set of bells clinging, and then a strange sensation passes through your body, a shiver almost as the suit tightens up around you, changing itself until it fits you perfectly. Then you feel another sensation, a sense of strength passing through your muscles. It's as if every muscle in your body gets a little bigger, a little bit stronger. You flex your muscles and stretch your arms out to the side, and then you look down. You see that you're floating just off of the floor. You get scared for a moment and fall back down to the ground, landing pretty gracefully. You can fly, and you're pretty sure you have super strength too. This could be the perfect Halloween costume. You could get from door to door incredibly fast if you can fly. Just think of all the candy you can collect. You straighten your body back out and you naturally just float above the ground. You grab your backpack and you float out towards the door, open it up and out into the forest. You land beside a tree that's nearby and you decide to test out your strength. You grab onto the tree and you pull upwards. To your surprise, the entire tree rips out of the ground. You find that you can wave it above your head in circles. It's a huge tree. You begin spinning it around over your head, tossing it up in the air and catching it with your other hand. The tree is as easy to throw around as a tennis ball. Amazing. You straighten the tree back up and jam it back into the ground where you found it. Then you use your feet to pack the dirt around it, hoping that it will live after this uh, crazy thing that it's been put through, being swung around over a child's superhero's head. But in deciding that that's not really relevant information for the story, you focus your attention back to the idea of flying. You do the same thing you did before, stretching your arms up over your head and then out your sides. And you can feel a new sense, a sense that lets you push up off the ground and into the air. First you float gently up above the trees, and then you let yourself loose, straightening your arms and your legs and shooting up into the air as quickly as you can. You quickly shoot up high above the trees, higher than any building in the area, until you pop through the clouds. You begin bobbing up and down through the clouds using your newfound superpowers. Then you fly down closer to the ground, looking for something familiar, something that'll help you find your school. You soon spot it and you follow a nearby street that looks familiar to you until you come to your school overhead. You look for a little area nearby that's secluded where no one will see you flying. Because as much as it's really cool to have superpowers, you're not sure you really want everyone to know you have superpowers. You land gently, make sure your backpack's secure, and you walk back out where the other kids are just entering the school. You join one of the lines, you go inside and go to your classroom. And the day's pretty normal. The teachers give out a little more candy than they normally would, and everyone around you is dressed up in something. After doing some special Halloween-themed class lessons, 
you and your friends head outside for recess. Everyone decides that you should maybe play soccer, or football as many of you know it as. One of your friends has brought out a soccer ball. You go and create some makeshift nets on either side of the field, and you and your friends begin to play. You're elected to be the first goalie, so you step back towards the goal and you get yourself as ready as you can. Your newfound strength makes it feel like you could jump really, really fast and move very quickly. Soon, you have your chance. The soccer ball is headed towards you with one of your friends kicking it down the field. You focus on the ball and you watch as your friend kicks it as hard as they can. Strangely, all time around you seems to slow down. You can see the soccer ball pushing the air to the sides it's going so slow. But strangely, you feel like you can move at a normal speed. You simply walk over to the area where the soccer ball is about to hit. You stick out one of your hands and you grab it. The soccer ball stops and time shoots back to normal. Everyone's amazed at the save you've just made. To them, it must have looked like you were going incredibly fast. You pick up the ball, take a few steps forward, and kick it back towards the other end. That recess every time the ball comes towards you. Time just immediately slows down and you easily stop it. Another power you didn't realize you had. Super speed. When the recess bell rings, you head back inside, and the rest of the day goes about like normal. When the end of the day comes, you're very excited, because tonight is Halloween, and you have an amazing costume that will allow you to collect more candy than ever before. Now instead of getting home like you normally do, you decide to go back in style. You head back over to the hidden place where you landed in the morning. You look around and make sure no one's looking. Then, you focus your concentration on pushing that magical energy against the ground. And you shoot yourself straight up in the air. You move so quickly that even if someone saw it, they'd probably just think it was a figment of their imagination. Once again, you fly up through the clouds, bob up and down through them, trying to catch them in your arms. But they just sort of float around you as you pass through. You fly for a while, high up above them, feeling the sunlight against your skin and the air against your face. It's an amazing sense of freedom to be able to fly. But soon down below you, the light dims, and it's time to trick or treat. You quickly fly back down to your house, landing in your front yard and walking inside. You put your backpack down, and you go and search through the kitchen for as many bags as you can find. And when you can't find enough, you head to your bedroom, you take off the pillowcase to all of your pillows and you shove them all inside one pillowcase. Then you realize you're going to need somewhere to keep the candy, so you head back to your bedroom. You find some little strings. You hang them out through the window and you close the window on top of the strings. You figure that each time you fill one up, you can just fly back, tie it to one of the strings and leave it hanging from your window giving you lots of time to fly back somewhere else and get more candy. When you're ready, you head outside, look around to see if anyone's watching, and then you jump up into the air until you're looking down on the world below. You fly up high enough to get a good view of the area below you, and you look for the area that has the most lights, thinking that it'll be a really good neighborhood to go trick-or-treating in. You see an area that looks very bright, and as you fly closer, you see that there's all sorts of Halloween decorations on almost every lawn in this neighborhood. 
it looks like the perfect place to go trick-or-treating. You find a tree nearby and you slowly lower yourself down just behind it and land gracefully on the ground. Luckily it's dark now so you don't have to be as careful about hiding your powers. You activate your super speed and everything around you seems to freeze. As it does, you run up to a door that has a group of trick-or-treaters just knocking on top of it and you stop in the back of the line. You let time go back to normal and one by one each of the kids gets candy put in their bag. You stick yours back out, you say thank you, and just as everyone's turning around, you turn your super speed back on. You zoom around the children from that group and go to the next house that has a group of children just about to show up. Once again, appearing magically behind them, getting some candy, and then disappearing right away. You do this again and again and again until you've filled up two entire pillow sacks with, well, with candy. With the pillowcase full, you fly back up into the air, back to your house, and you float just outside your window, where you tie the bag of candy up to one of the strings that's hanging outside. Then, grabbing another bag, you zoom back up into the air and repeat the process. That night, you fly from neighborhood to neighborhood, filling up your bag with as much candy as you can. By the end of the night, you've collected six entire pillowcases or large grocery bags full of candy. Thinking that you might have time to do just one more, you fly back up into the air and look for a neighborhood you haven't been to yet. You soon find one and fly down towards it. That's when you see something that you do not like. There's two bigger and older looking kids in mean looking costumes who are bothering a friend of yours. They seem to be bothering your friend to give them all of their candy. Your friend tries to resist, but you watch as they push him over, grab his bag full of candy, and run away. You quickly drop down to the ground beside your friend. Are you okay? You say. Yeah, they just stole all my candy. Ah, uh, well, don't worry. I'll take care of it, you say. Wait right here. You quickly activate your super speed. You search around the neighborhood for as many rocks as you can find. And quickly, using your super speed powers, you rush from rock to rock and pick up a whole bunch of them, filling two sacks with rocks. When they're full, you fly up into the air and look for the two bullies. You soon see them walking below back to their houses, jumping up and giving each other a high five for what a great job they've done. All of the different things you could do to get revenge for your friend pass through your head. But you eventually decide to be nice about the whole thing. Or sort of nice anyways. You activate your super speed, freezing time around you. And you fly down towards the bullies, still moving at incredible speed. You exchange the sacks that the bullies are holding for the sacks you filled up with rocks. Then you jump back up into the air and fly away. The bullies have no idea that all of their candy is gone. You fly back to your friend and land a little distance behind him, then run up beside. Hey, look what I got, you say. You hold out the sacks of candy and your friend takes them amazed, way more candy than they'd collected in the first place. Thanks, they say. You're welcome. I'll see you tomorrow at school, you say. You run back off until you're in a dark enough area that you can jump back up into the air and fly. You decide that that's probably good enough for a day's work. 
and you fly back towards your house, landing in the front yard and walking inside. Eh, no time to go back to the costume tree right now. You walk into your room and you unbuckle the costume. As soon as you undo the button on the back of your neck, the costume suddenly grows again and becomes very easy to take off. You put it on a hanger and hang it up in your room. Then, extremely tired from the night, and knowing that you have lots and lots of candy hanging safely outside your window, you climb into your bed and pull the covers up over top of yourself to your chin. Your eyes are becoming heavy, so you let them close, and you let your head sink down into the pillow. You begin to focus on your breath, just noticing it as it goes in and out. And with each breath, you allow your muscles to drain all of their energy, and you allow them to sink down deep into the mattress. And with each breath, you go deeper and deeper, allowing your muscles to melt and allowing your mind to go wherever it wants to go. Sweet dreams, everyone.